Ancient stone ruins in Bolivia. Ghost cities in China. A whale skeleton in the Sahara Desert. A sunken forest off the coast of Great Britain. A recent snowstorm in Morocco. A billionaire's survival bunker in New Zealand. Something specific connects all of these phenomena, and today you will find out what. Welcome to Science of the Pole Shift. My name is Kent Crandall, and I am involved in a community of scientists, astronomers, and independent researchers whose focus is the Nibiru system and the upcoming pole shift. I would like you to forget anything you have heard about Nibiru up until now, for today we start with a clean slate. I will present data that will challenge your worldview. I encourage your skepticism, but I also want you to think critically and question your assumptions. My goal is to enlighten and entertain. Let's get started. Meet Nibiru. Nibiru is a large planet about the size of Neptune that swoops by Earth once every 3,600 years. That might sound a little outlandish, but it makes perfect sense when you know our history. The last time Nibiru passed by Earth was around 1628 BC, roughly, at the end of the Bronze Age. Pictured here is a Sumerian tablet from that time that depicts the planet Nibiru, which appears in the sky as a globe with wings. In between the moon on the left and the sun on the right. The Sumerians chose the name Nibiru because it means crossing or intersection, since once every 3600 years Nibiru's path intersects the path of Earth. When Nibiru appeared in the sky 3600 years ago, it looked like a red ball with wings. See the picture in the middle of this slide? That's actually a recent photo from, uh, taken from Antarctica. The wings are just the red dust and debris that envelops the planet Nibiru, like the tail of a comet. The Mesopotamian and Mediterranean cultures at that time made many carvings of Nibiru and incorporated this globe with wings symbol into their decorations and their religions. Here are several examples, including an Egyptian one, along with hieroglyphics. The image of a globe with wings made a very lasting impression on humanity. The likeness of Nibiru got incorporated into Zoroastrianism and the Egyptian goddess Isis. And we see Nibiru today in modern branding and graphic design. Look at all the little Nibirus. You can't drive down the street without seeing Nibiru today. But how is it that a planet the size of Neptune can swoop through our inner solar system at all? Where does Nibiru even come from? To explain where Nibiru comes from, we have to back up and establish some facts. First, our sun is part of a binary system, meaning there is another star attached gravitationally to our sun. Our sun has a binary twin, except in our case, this twin is a dead star, meaning it is unlit. You cannot see it in the night sky. It is just a big dead rock hanging out in space billions of miles away. From the UC Berkeley News in June 2017, new evidence that all stars are born in pairs as part of a binary system. All stars. And our sun, which is a star, is no exception. And but Except the only special thing is its twin is dead. It has a dead twin. So, in 1983, NASA and JPL launched an infrared telescope called the IRAS probe to take pictures of the sun's dead twin, and they spotted Nibiru incoming on this mission. It was big news at the time in 1983. And they documented this later in 1987 in the New Science and Invention Encyclopedia. They explain it nicely with this diagram. You see you have the Earth and the sun right there in the red circle, the dead star, that's the sun's dead twin, and then Nibiru, which here they're calling the 10th planet. And the context of this was discussing the um, movements of the Pioneer 10 and Pioneer 11 space probes. Here are some images to clarify the situation. Our sun's dead twin sits out in the direction of the constellation of Orion. So when you look at Orion's belt at night, you are looking towards the sun's dead twin. Its gravitational pull creates the elliptical orbits of the outer planets Neptune and Uranus. See how they are pulled towards the sun's dead twin. And this is not to scale, of course. This is for illustration purposes. There is a planet that orbits both the sun and the sun's dead twin. And astronomers see this all the time out in our galaxy. Planets orbiting both stars in a binary system. We call the planet Nibiru, which is the name the Sumerians gave it the last time it passed by Earth 3,600 years ago. When Nibiru flies into our solar system, 
It comes up under the sun towards the orbital plane and slows down to a crawl due to the crowded particle flows of our inner solar system. Nibiru gradually makes its way up towards the orbit of Earth, bobbing and weaving in its path like a salmon swimming upstream. It takes 20 years to do this. Nibiru dithers, backtracks, and lurches as it takes 20 years to creep up past planet Earth. When Nibiru does finally break through the orbital plane, it grabs the Earth in a magnetic grip, pulling it out of its orbit only for the Earth to snap free as Nibiru can escapes and continues on its long journey back towards the sun's dead twin. Earth, in the meantime, experiences a sudden shift of its crust over its core, resulting in a different tilt to the Earth's axis, with the equator and ice caps suddenly in new locations. This crustal shift is called a pole shift, because the ice caps always end up in new locations. This slide shows the slow wandering path that Nibiru takes once it enters our inner solar system. Please understand that these images are not to scale. If the sun were this size, the Earth would be a tiny pebble two blocks away. Also, the movements of Nibiru are exaggerated for effect. That said, Nibiru started near the sun in 2003 and has been approaching Earth ever since. Right now, it is as far away as Venus, and scientists estimate it will pass by Earth in another two years or so. When Nibiru makes its final flyby of planet Earth, it grabs Earth in a magnetic grip, spins it around, then lets it go, creating the pole shift, which we will cover in more detail later. So why does Nibiru grab Earth and spin it around, but not Venus or Mars? It has to do with magnetism. You see, some planets are giant magnets, and others are not. Earth and Nibiru are both giant magnets out in space, while Venus and Mars do not have substantial magnetic fields. Nibiru has been messing with Earth's magnetic field for years now, as we will see later. And the Sun is a, the biggest magnet of all. The planet Nibiru is actually part of its own mini-system. Nibiru has a handful of moons following it, as well as a huge tail of boulders, rocks, gravel, red dust, and oil. Here is an artistic rendition of the Nibiru system, showing the shroud of red iron oxide dust, rust basically, that envelops it, along with several small moons that swirl around it as it travels, caught up in its gravitational pull. Again, this is not to scale, as in reality, this tail of dust and debris sweeps out for millions of miles in space. The tail of Nibiru gets blown around in space by the solar wind, and this shroud of dust and debris makes it look like a globe with wings in the sky. Here is another artist's rendition of the Nibiru system, this time looking head-on with the tail flowing out to the side. Can you see the globe with wings? Something else you need to understand before we continue is how the tail of a comet behaves. The sun is constantly shooting off particles of energy called the solar wind. The solar wind causes the tail of a comet to always point away from the sun, as you can see in this image. So the tail of Nibiru also always points away from the sun. Nibiru's millions of miles long red tail is always getting blown away from the sun, generally towards Earth. Remember how the IRAS probe spotted Nibiru incoming in 1983? 20 years later, in March of 2003, Nibiru finally reached our inner solar system and it parked itself between the Earth and the Sun. And honestly, scientists at the time didn't realize it was going to slow down and stop like that. They thought it would keep shooting through. You can't look up at the sky right now and see the Nibiru system because it is still too far away. And it sits in the Sun's glare. Eclipse glasses don't work either, since Nibiru doesn't give off light. It only reflects it. However, if you use a telescope with special chemical filters, you can take pictures of Nibiru and track its location daily. The pole shift community has been tracking it since 2003. In a couple of years, Nibiru should leave the sun's glare and become daylight visible to everyone. Then you too will see the red globe with wings up in the sky for the first time in 3600 years. Very exciting. 